marvelous hymn today and the biblical truth of our hymns. We're going to do, now let me look at the title of, of what it's written in the book I have. Take my life and let it be. Now we're getting this out of, out of the United Methodist Church. This is from the old Methodists. This is where Methodists, where Bible sound, you know, old time Methodists. We're going to look at this website, uh, fair use of copyright, because we're learning. Not putting down this, <clears throat> the Methodist. Starts off, take my life and let it be consecrated. That's the title. The hymnal I have, take my life and let it be. This hymnal I have is horrible. It's absolutely horrible, man. I don't even want to tell you the name. And it's written by Frances Havergale. And I hope I got her name right. It's the United Methodist Hymnal number 399. So, she's known as a consecration, consecration poet. She attempted to live her life fully consecrated to Christ. And those that she saw in any physical and spiritual need. Abigail's spiritual journey, she started memorizing passages in the Bible at age four. And writing verse by writing verses by age seven. She was nurtured by a father, Anglican clergyman, who was devoted to Christian hymnology, H Y M N O D Y. Although Havergill's hell, frail, and she lived barely 43 years, she learned several modern languages as well as Hebrew and Greek. She was a singer, and some noted and known as accomplished pianist. We have her account concerning the composition Take My Life in 1874. And we quote, I went to a little visit of five days to Arley House, A-R-E-L-E-Y. There were ten persons in the house, some unconverted and long prayer for. Some converted, but not rejoicing Christians. He gave me the prayer, Lord, give me all this house. And he just did. Before I left the house, everyone had got a blessing. The last night of my visit, after I retired, the governess asked me to go to two, do two daughters. They were crying, etc. Then there, both of them trusted and rejoiced. It was nearly midnight. I was too happy to sleep and passed most of the night praising and renewal of my consecration. And these little couplets formed themselves and chimed in my heart one after another till they finish ever, ever only all for thee. And of course. And to him that is consecrated to Christ seems to cover every aspect surrendered to him. The original text appears originally in six four line standards, which I got. <coughs> Uh, the United Methodist Hymnal two stands are to combine to, to produce three longer ones. Each line begins with the imperative verb, take. Many musical settings of this hymn are common usage. Each stanza implores deeply what it means to surrender to Christ. When was the last time this hymn was sung in your church? The first stanza consecrates the singer's life and moments, as well as physical body, hands and feet. The second stanza may be somewhat autobiographical in light of Abigail's vocal ability, consecrating her voice and her lips. This, the stanza continues personal possession of silver gold, as well as intelligence. 
final stanza implores personal attributes of very core of one's being, will, heart, love, and self. In 1878, 1878, she wrote a friend, quote, The Lord has shown me another little step, and of course, I have taken it with extreme delight. Take my silver and my gold now means shipping off all my ornaments to church missionary house, including a jewel cabinet that is ready for fit for countless, where all will be accepted and disposed of for me. I don't think I ever packed a box with such pleasure. End of quote. So this hymn is a personal, lively hymn of the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not made up. This is the life of the singer. So let's go in, too. Again, it starts off, hey, Take my life. That's not death. I mean, God can't use a dead Christian. Take her life. She lived young. And let it be consecrated. That's removed from the title. Take my life and let it be consecrated. That's the name of the title, not, not the title of this book. Given all to God. And that's what this hymn puts forth. Everything to God. Everything. Not giving a little part of you. Not giving God just Sundays. Well, I was in church Sunday morning. I gave a dime. I gave a dollar. Lord, to thee, take my moments and my days. Let them, let them now, well, excuse me, all right. Let them flow in Christless praise. Take my life, take my moment, and take my day. She's speaking presently, now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, now. And let them flow for careless, ceaseless praise to God. I didn't mean to say careless, ceaseless praise. Flow. Take my hands and let them move. You know, one of the things that, that when Moses anointed Aaron and his sons was they took the blood and they put it on the finger and the ear and the big toe. As far as putting it on the ear, you better be careful what you hear. Put it on the finger, you better be careful what you touch. And put it on the feet, bear, be careful where you go. What, do you, what are your hands What are your hands doing? What are your hands doing for God now? Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Have you consecrated your hands for the use of God? At the impulse of thy love. For the love of God. For God's love for us, for your love of God, have you given him your hands? Can you play an instrument? Can you write out a poem? Can you write out a sermon? Can you open a Bible and show somebody the way of salvation? Can you open a Bible and help a Christian grow? Take my feet. And let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Romans chapter 10, God, Romans chapter 10 says, God loves the feet, the beautiful feet of them that carry the glad tidings, the good news, the gospel. Are your feet running to holiness? Are your feet going to preach the gospel? Or do they walk into a movie house? Do they walk walk into the church house in the midweek, or do they walk into a, you know, baseball or bout arena, or where are your feet taking you? You know, God said, Jesus said that every idle word we shall give an account thereof. 
I wonder if we're going to have to give an account for every footstep we make. Holiness and unholiness. This hymn makes you really think if you love the Lord. What are your hands and your feet doing for God? Are they beautiful in the eyes of God? Take my voice and let me sing. Always. Only. For my king. I was talking to a woman the other day at church and we were talking about white women too, but we talked about a couple of colored women who grew up in a church and they had a lovely, beautiful testimony of their music. And they grew up and gave it to the devil in the world. And their lives most miserable at their death. There are people God has given a talent with their voice and they've turned around and used it against God. They've taken their voice, their talent, and hid it in the world, in the earth. They say I have a good singing voice and I don't believe it, but they say I do. So I'm in the church choir. They say it. The, the ones that know music say, you got a good singing voice, I don't believe it. I'm in the choir because I'm giving my voice to God. I would not sing solo or specialist or anything like that, or maybe even a duo, whatever you call it. Well, you giving your voice to the... You know, I don't believe Jesus is our king. That's wrong. He's never king of the church. Never. He'll be king in, in Jerusalem in the millennium, and, he, and will be kings, and he'll be the king of kings. Not now. Take my lips, and let them be filled with messages for thee. Do your lips... Praise God in Jesus Christ. Do your lips take the gospel of God in Jesus Christ to the lost? Does your lips proclaim to a Christian growth and, and fellowship and honor and praise and blessings of God? Now Jesus did say, I already said, every idle word man shall give an account thereof. What have your lips have said? What have your lips been? Have they been holy? Or they've been unholy. Take my silver and my gold. Not a mite would I withhold. And I read you the story. She did. She gave it to the mission. She gave it to the mission house. That widow that came and cast her two mites. I don't know if I would be so bold to do that. My prayer has been Proverbs 30. Lord, let me not be rich and let me not be poor. Let me not have so much money that I deny you. Let me not be so poor that I have to beg or even steal. To curse your name. I'm not going to brag, but I do give above the tithe. I don't think tithing is law for the church. I think it's to be cheerfully given as Paul wrote to the Corinthians. I don't think for the church you go quoting Malachi. And, and I know Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. Jacob said, I'll give you a tenth. But even the law and even what Paul said, you can have to set 10%. But if you give it grudgingly, God doesn't accept it. God wants a cheerful gather, giver, whether it be one penny, 10%, 20%, or 99.99%. You can give 100% of what you want to do. If you don't give it cheerfully, God's not going to record it. Take my intellect and use every power 
as thou hast chosen. Take my heart and my mind. Now the Bible says the imagination and the thoughts of the heart. Mend the mind. You've written songs or poetry or painted, and what do you, who and what have you done it for? Whose honor and whose glory? Have you sat down to figure out a hard problem just to solve it in a crossword puzzle? That'll get you no aim? Or have you sat down and tried to figure out something in the Bible? Where is your studying? Studying the world or studying the Word of God? I know men who who who've done Sunday school and they they rely totally on what other people say and they've been wrong. Now I use other people's brains, but I study the Bible. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. I want to be a preacher, teacher, maybe pastor of a church. That has been my ambition. That may not be the ambition of God. God may not have that will in my life. Right now, that's what seems to be what I think the Lord has for a will. He may I want you to be a missionary. I want you to be evangelist. Or I just want you to do what you're doing right now. Take my will is whatever we think and whatever we want and we turn it over to God and it may be totally, completely 180 or 360 opposite of what we think. I have no idea. Take my heart it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Now, from the Bible, the heart is where salvation comes from. It's also an evil and wicked, vile thing, Jeremiah. And Jesus said, out of the heart comes adultery, murders, and all sin. But the heart also brings forth salvation. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. Are you willing to take all the filth that your heart has and let the Holy Spirit do a work? And I'm not talking about reformation. I mean the Holy Spirit do a work as you are saved. Do a work in your heart and, and house clean in your heart for holiness and righteousness. To be pure before God. Take my love, my Lord. I pour at thy feet its treasure store. What do you love? Are you willing for God to take it? Do you love wife, children, automobile, job, the beach, the mountains, park, a fair, poetry, hymns, history? What is it that your devotion and your desire is? Now, are you willing to, like, with your will, give it over to God and let God take it? I'm struggling on that one. When you give God your love, what you love, and you let him work it to his holiness, there will be treasure. Such thy affliction are things above, not things on the earth.
take myself, and I will be ever only all for thee. My life, my moments and days, my hands, my feet, my voice, and my lips, my silver and gold and might, my intellect, my will, my heart, my love is incomplete until you give the Lord myself. You speak for yourself, I'm speaking for myself. Because you can give God your life and still hang on to something. And not give it all to God. When Peter gave up fishing, totally, God was able to use him. And use him to the fullest. Lord, I give my life to thee. And it may not be the life that you want. It may not be the life that you desire. Thine, God, forever more to be. Forever. Starting today, forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, I give my life to thee. Some people's Lord is the world. Some people's Lord is career. Some people's Lord is the world. Some people's Lord is not God and Jesus Christ. The Lord for Miss Frances Abigail, again, forgive me if I'm wrong. The Lord is God, Jesus Christ. There are Christians who are saved and their Lord is not God and Jesus Christ. And they have given their all, their life, to something that is not to God. I give my life to thee. Thine. Forever. More to be. So sum it up. What is the life that, that Miss Habergale. And according to her life, that she did do this. She gave her life for the consecration. She gave her moments in her day. She gave her hand. And she gave her feet. She gave her voice and her lips. She gave her silver, gold, and might to missions. Her intellect. She gave her will. And she gave her heart. She gave her love. And most of all, she gave herself. She gave it her all. And when we don't give God it all, we're not giving God our entire. And it's, sometimes it's harsh. Sometimes We don't understand. We don't see. But can we say, take my life and let it be? No, that's not the title. That's the title of the hymn called to in this hymn I got. The title that she wrote, take my life and let it be consecrated. 
You can say, Lord, take my life. But you consecrate. Take my Sunday, Lord, Sunday morning, take it. You can have my Sunday morning. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's mine. Lord, you can take whatever my paycheck is at the end of the week. And I've paid everything and I've done everything and I've lived it up. Whatever left is yours. My hands, I, I'll, hold it, I'll hold a hymn on Sunday morning. Maybe I'll open the Bible Sunday morning. My feet. You don't know. You don't want to know where my feet are going to go. See, to be consecrated and giving God all means you give God all. And there may come time in our life that we may not be happy because we're not content. But we forget God's in control. We forget the fact is. This is hard for me. We gotta let God run our life. Because a holy and righteous God knows a lot better than a poor old sinner like me. I mean, haven't you? Uh, I'm thinking right now. Haven't you ever prayed for something for the Lord? Come on, Lord God, please give it to me. Come on, Lord God. I think about there's one thing right now recently, and I thank God He didn't give it to me. It would have been a misery. I'll wait for the next blessing. I'll wait for God to, to bless me with, not what I wanted specifically, but in general. You know what I mean?